Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today, I am going to be going for the Platinum N100% for Horizon Forbidden West. If you haven't already, I would highly recommend you go check out my first video on the Horizon series, which is of course for Horizon Zero Dawn. And then once you finish that video, you can come back here and watch this one too. Welcome back, and let's continue on with Forbidden West. So, I don't want to spoil too much, just in case you guys haven't played the game yet. So, I'll just say that pretty much it is a direct sequel to Zero Dawn, and Aloy has to save the world once again. With that being said, there will of course be some minor spoilers, just because of the trophy names and the trophy descriptions as well, and what actually is in the game, so just be prepared for that. But I won't spoil any major plot points. So now, in terms of the trophies, there are actually 80 trophies to get in the entire game, that is including the Platinum and DLC as well. And so if you want to break it down even further, there are 59 trophies in the base game, three trophies in the DLC Trophy Pack 1, which is for New Game Plus, and 18 trophies for the DLC Trophy Pack 2, which is for the Burning Shores DLC. Very similar to the first game, this game consists of story trophies, collectible trophies, combat trophies, and some miscellaneous trophies too. PSN Profiles gives this a 4 out of 10 difficulty, takes one playthrough and about 40 hours to Platinum. And then the New Game Plus DLC adds on another playthrough, another 15 hours, and is slightly harder than the Platinum. And then the Burning Shores DLC adds on another 12 hours, you only have to do one playthrough of it, and is slightly easier than the Platinum and the New Game Plus as well. So, in total, according to PSM Profiles, it should take about 67 hours to get the 100% for this game. Now, for me, this was completely and utterly wrong. It actually took me around 95 hours to get the 100% for this game. That is why this video has taken a while to make, because I've been trying to finish the game off. But, to be fair, I didn't do things probably as efficiently as I could have, and I did quite a bit of exploring as well, so that definitely made the hours go up a bit. You could definitely 100% this game quicker than 95 hours, but 67 hours, I don't know about that. I think it'd be more around the 80 hour mark in my opinion as well. So if you are going to go for this 100%, be prepared for that time sink. All right, so just before we actually get into the trophies themselves, let's quickly go over the steps that I broke this game down into. So the first step was pretty much just enjoy the game, play through it, do whatever exploring I want to do, and see whatever trophies I get along the way up until just before the final mission. So very similar to my Zero Dawn breakdown as well, you then move on to cleaning everything up, then completing the final mission, and then after that you move on to completing the Burning Shores DLC, and then from there, with all your equipment and skills upgraded, you can do a new game plus playthrough on the hardest difficulty, making it quite easy as you keep all your stuff. And then there is actually a step 5 this time where you need to finish off getting all the new game plus items, which I will explain later on when we get to that. So without further ado, let's get into the journey. Okay, let's go. So of course, the first thing to do is load up the game and start a new game. And of course, as per usual, I just selected the normal difficulty, the medium one, because um, I knew I was going to have to do a harder one later on anyway. And the first thing I noticed when loading into the game and starting it is, wow, look at how gorgeous this game is. This scenery is seriously some of the best scenery I've ever seen in a game. It really does push the PS5 to its limits. It looks amazing. So this whole first area that you go to is pretty much just a really long tutorial, but this game did come out like four years after the first one, so I guess for people who waited that time, they did need that bit of a refresher, but because I've played both games back to back, this was kind of annoying, but it did also introduce lots of the new stuff in the game, like swimming has been revamped, you can actually go under the water now, so that adds a whole other depth of exploration. 
Uh, we also get introduced to the menu here as well. The whole thing has been revamped from the first game. Uh, so the inventory is a lot better now. The skill tree, there's multiple different ones. Uh, the map looks good. Um, the catalog for the machines and the data points as well. Uh, they really did make an improvement on the UI in this game too. And of course the combat is very similar to the first game. Here I was able to scan my first ever machine, the Burrower. Uh, there is a trophy for scanning every machine in the game, so keep that in mind. And I was also able to kill it for my first machine kill of the game. And there are also trophies related to killing every different type of machine. I then crafted a new item in this game called the Pull Caster. Uh, this is mainly used in solving puzzles throughout the game and also pulling debris as you can see. And it is also quite a useful tool for traversal in this game as well as there are now grapple points so you're pretty much like Batman in this game. And after continuing on a bit further into the tutorial I got my first trophy which was for stealth killing 10 machines. That's how easy this trophy is, you can literally get it in the tutorial area. You will most likely be stealth killing or you can stealth kill all of these machines here in that area. I then had my first boss fight of the game, which was against this new machine here called a Slither Fang. This is just one of many new machines that Forbidden West offers. I of course defeated it first go, which caused me to level up to level 2, where I was then able to get my first skill point and upgrade my first ever skill on the skill tree. And finally, after completing all that tutorial stuff, we finally actually get to the main game, which causes the title card, Horizon Forbidden West. And shortly after that, I got the first story trophy of the game, which is for reaching the Daunt and seeking passage into the Forbidden West. Uh, now this is definitely where the game opens up and you're actually on the main map, where you, which we will be exploring for the rest of the game. And it's pretty cool because fast travel is now free if you're at a campfire you no longer have to use a fast travel pack you can just go to a campfire and fast travel for free however if you're not near a campfire you do have to use a fast travel pack to get somewhere there is also a stash now in this game so you don't have to worry about constantly having to break down your old materials as if you have an excess amount they will just go straight to your stash and you can pick them up later if need be so much better than zero dawn also, another great feature about this game compared to Zero Dawn is you can now pretty much climb anything. Well, not everything, but you can definitely scale certain walls now. As you can see, I'm literally climbing a cliff face. Uh, when you use your focus, you can scan and it shows these yellow lines, which shows you where you can actually climb. But wow, this it is a lot better now that you can climb a lot more things. And so after finishing that climb, I got to the top of this tower where I actually got my first collectible of the game, a lens. But, these aren't actually related to any trophy at all, so we're not going to worry about them. I then also came across my first metal flower of the game, but these are no longer collectibles like in Zero Dawn. They're actually an obstacle blocking your path, and you will unlock uh, the item that opens the path later on in the main story. Also, now there are workbenches throughout the map, and this is how you upgrade your stuff. Unlike in Zero Dawn, where you could just do it straight from your inventory, you do have to go to a workbench in this game, but there is so many, so much more things you can upgrade in this game, it's a lot more in-depth now. I don't know what it is about open world games, but for some reason they always have to have a random board game that they just made up and decided to add to the game. To be fair to Forbidden West, this is actually quite fun. It's called Machine Strike, and it's very in-depth for just something that they obviously added to the game. Um, but there are tro some trophies related to completing these, so keep that in mind for later. Also, no, I'm not going to explain how it works. It's very difficult to explain, so you just have to play the game for yourself. I then came across my first melee pit, as in this game they have completely revamped the close combat. You can now actually do combos and such, and you can also chain together melee and then ranged attack straight after with this thing called a Resonator Blast, which does heaps of damage. So, definitely a lot better than Zero Dawn. And these melee pits will come up later for a trophy requirement. I then came across another new collectible, which are these things called Vista Points. These are very similar to the Vantage data points from Zero Dawn, however this time there is a puzzle related to them. You pretty much have to line up the hologram that you get with an actual uh, part of the environment in order to get the data point to appear. Uh, this is related to a trophy but I will get to that soon. 
I then came across another new collectible, which are these Relic Ruins, which offer up the ornaments, which are the actual collectible. But the Relic Ruins are pretty much these new puzzle areas you have to figure out. Sorry for cutting back and forth, but this is actually where I figured out the Vista Point. As you can see, I lined it up and then it came up with this image here. Very similar to the Vantage Data Points from Zero Dawn. I then went back and did the Relic Ruin here, which pretty much consists of you um, figuring out a puzzle in the area which gives you a key or a code to put in, which then unlocks a room where you find the actual collectible, which is an ornament. There are some trophies related to these things, so I'll get back to them later on. In the skill tree, I also unlocked my first ever Valor Surge, which are these new type of special abilities you can unlock while in combat. Some of them are quite good. They pretty much just boost some of your stats for a certain period of time, making uh, combat easier and plays to your uh, certain playstyle as well. Moving on, I then got the next trophy, which is again another story related trophy, which is for clearing the way to the embassy and reopening the Daunt. After that, I then unlocked this trophy for performing three different unlockable melee combos. So you want to make sure you unlock them in your skill tree first, and then the best place to do it are in these melee pits where they literally teach you how to do the combo. So you'll definitely get three different ones done. And so I was on a bit of a roll here as I got another trophy, which is for fully upgrading three different weapons. Uh, so if you just upgrade these uncommon weapons here, you'll definitely get three different ones done in the early game. Definitely by the end of the game anyway. I then came across my first hunting grounds, which do make a return from the first game, and they are exactly the same. Three different trials you have to complete in the quickest time possible. You'll get rewards for doing it. And yes, there is a trophy related to doing these hunting grounds. There's actually only uh, three of them in the game, uh, but we'll get to that later on. But for actually finishing this hunting grounds and getting at least a quarter stripe mark in all three trials, I did get a trophy. So yeah, in this game you actually don't have to get the best possible score in the hunting grounds in order to get the trophy, you just have to do the bare minimum. And then as I mentioned before with Machine Strike, I did get a trophy here which I won a match against two different Machine Strike challenges. This is actually the only trophy related to Machine Strike, so pretty good. You only have to do this twice and then you can kind of forget about it. However, when you do beat them, they do offer quite good skill points. So I'd still recommend doing them when you find them throughout the world. I then decided to move along and continue the story where I got another trophy for surviving the ambush at the embassy and gaining passage into the Forbidden West. Another story related trophy. And from this, I actually unlocked the Shield Wing, which is another cool new aspect of this game and adds another layer to traversal as you can now slowly float your way down to the ground without taking any fall damage. From there, I actually found my first Rebel Camp and completed the key objectives. So these are kind of the replacement of the Bandit Camps from the first game. They pretty much act the same way. You just got to take out all the enemies and do some little objectives here and there. I then also discovered my first tall neck of the game, which do make a return from Zero Dawn as well, and are pretty much the towers that you climb, and then you can see the map, just like other open world games. The cool thing about tall necks in this game is that they actually most of the time have a puzzle required to actually get on top of them, very similar to what they actually did in the Frozen Wilds DLC from the first game. They obviously experimented there, and yeah, tall necks are a lot more... Uh, fun to do as they require a bit more thinking rather than just climbing somewhere and then jumping onto it and climbing up to the top. And so of course I did get a trophy for reaching the top of a tall neck and accessing its information for the first time. There are other tall necks throughout the game and there is another trophy related to completing these ones as well. I then also got another pretty easy trophy here which is for detaching 100 components from machines. You'll definitely get this one done just by playing through the game as detaching parts from machines is actually a key component of the combat in this game. I also then got a trophy for completing a set of contracts at a salvage contractor. Uh, these are pretty much just a glorified uh, fetch quest. You just got to do like four of these for this one NPC and that will complete all the salvage contracts for them. Moving on from that, I then came across another collectible, which are these survey drones, which 
you have to climb up and then jump onto them, drag them down to the floor, and then you will get a component. Following that, I then found my first black box, which again is a, another new collectible. And these are pretty easy. You just got to pick them up off the floor and you'll get a, a audio data point. And so with picking that up, I also got this trophy for recovering five different collectibles. So one survey drone, one black box, one relic ruin, one vista point, and one of those signal lenses, which you do actually need to get one of those. Sorry, I said you didn't actually need them, but you do for this trophy. But yeah, pretty much in this game, uh, yeah, it's not like Zero Dawn where you had to find pretty much every single collectible. You really only have to find one of each. So collectibles are very easy in this game. Speaking of, another return from Zero Dawn is the Cauldrons. So again, these make a return. They are pretty much the exact same thing. These mini dungeons where you have to solve puzzles, take out machines, and then at the end you'll face a mini boss. After defeating them, you will then unlock uh, overrides for certain machines. And so with that, I did unlock the trophy for reaching the core of a cauldron and accessing its information for the first time. So similar to the tall necks, you get a first time trophy, but there is also a trophy later on for doing all of them. Moving on, I then managed to get this trophy for resolving all of the problems troubling the daunt. So this actually isn't a main story trophy. This is for completing certain side quests. And they're pretty much just all the side quests that appeared in that main first starting area, the daunt. Um, I'll pop up all these side quests that you have to complete in order to get that trophy now. I then found a dyer who was able to dye my armor for me, which unlocked me this trophy for putting a dye on for the first time. Pretty easy to do, honestly. I then completed another hunting grounds, this time the one in Plainsong. I then also got the trophy for unlocking three weapon techniques for three different weapon classes. So this is another new feature in this game is certain uh, weapons have special abilities that you can use rather than just firing them. Uh, they might have a stronger shot that you can only do one time or something that does more damage, for example. I then also completed my first rebel outpost, which are different to the rebel camps. They're pretty much just smaller versions of the camps with less enemies and you just got to take them all out and then you unlock soldier tags, which is kind of another collectible. Uh, you do have to complete four of these outposts for a trophy later on. Moving on with the story, I then got this trophy for securing a base of operations and rebooting Gaia, another story related trophy. I then also got my first level related trophy, which is for hitting player level 20. Shortly after that, I got a trophy for obtaining one weapon from every weapon class. I'll pop all the different classes up on the screen now, but they did add quite a few new ones, such as this bolt blaster here, which was never in Zero Dawn, and some of them are pretty cool. Moving on from that, I then completed another cauldron, but the cool thing about this cauldron is it also houses a tall neck as well, which I was also able to complete that as well, so it's a two-in-one, pretty cool. I then was also able to fully upgrade three different outfits, which then netted me another trophy, very similar to upgrading three weapons. I then also managed to complete my fourth Rebel Outpost, which netted me this trophy for completing four of them. Now there are more than four in the on the map, but you only have to do four to get the trophy. After that, I was then able to find the first painter I came across, which you are able to put face paint on Aloy, which is cool to customize her further. Surprisingly, there is no trophy actually related to applying a face paint to her for the first time, unlike dyeing an armor for the first time. Anyway, after that, I then attempted to take on this melee pit here at the Bulwark. And this one it took me a couple of attempts. I died quite a few times as you have to fight two dudes at the same time, um, but eventually I got it done. And that is one of three melee pits completed in a certain side quest, which will result in a trophy later on. Also, just to break this video up, here's a funny little uh, part from the game that I had a good chuckle at. You gonna defy him like that arrogant shit up there? That was an unkind comparison. Anyway, after that, I then got a trophy for completing my third Relic Ruin. So there are, of course, more than just three in on the map but you only have to do three to get this trophy. 
Now, this is just a bit of an extra. You don't actually need to do this, but I actually managed to take down the Strike Master in the game. So this is the hardest Strike opponent you have to face. It takes quite a long time to do, as it can be a bit of RNG and a bit of strategy to actually win Machine Strike. Um, but unfortunately, you don't actually get a trophy for it, so I did it anyway. A great success! After that, I then did a side quest which unlocked me the arena here, which is a great way to get some great armor and weapons, some of the best in the game, by doing these wave-like uh, challenges or well, different trials, kind of like hunting ground trials, but you just got to take down um, machines and it gets harder and harder as you go along. Whilst attempting these arena challenges, I managed to get this trophy for inflicting every different elemental state on an enemy at least once. Um, so I'll pop them up on the screen, the different elemental types, but you got your basic fire, ice, poison, and whatnot, and you just gotta, yeah, apply it with your weapons, apply it on an enemy at least once. And as you can see, at the same time, I also managed to complete my first arena challenge set. So you do only have to do one of these, and you can just do the easiest difficulty one, and never have to worry about it again. But if you do want to get some of the best weapons and armor in the game, you are going to have to take on more of the harder arena challenges later on. After that, I then went to another melee pit at Scolding Spears, where I managed to take out the pit master here and get another one of them done. I also found my first gauntlet run after that, which is pretty much a new game mode, which is for racing. So it's kind of like, I know it's a weird comparison, but it's kind of like Mario Kart, because you can uh, pick up items and use them to take out your enemies or boost you uh, further along. And so I managed to come back and win my first race, um, and there is a trophy related to completing. You have to complete two of these, so we'll get to the next one very soon. But moving on from that, I managed to get the next main story trophy, which was for defending the cool route and recovering ether. And then without really any rest in between, I managed to get the next main story trophy, which was for following Beta's distress signal and returning her to the base. After that, I then managed to override another tall neck. After that then, during the main story, I was also able to craft the diving mask, which allows you to infinitely breathe underwater, underwater making exploring underwater infinitely easier. And I just got to shout this out real quick here, but part of the main story here, you actually get to go to Las Vegas, which is really cool. And once you've lit everything up inside this big dome here, it looks amazing. I've actually been to Las Vegas in real life and it's pretty cool even though it's not really the exact same as this is in the future um, and it's there's a lot more tech obviously than in our world um, but it's still cool to compare the strip which is what it's based on in Las Vegas the main strip pretty cool to compare it to what I saw in real life Anyway, moving on from that, I managed to get this trophy here for picking up five different heavy weapons. So this one's fairly simple. Uh, some enemy types drop heavy weapons and you just got to pick up five different ones. And then straight after that, I also got another main story trophy, which was for draining Las Vegas and recovering Poseidon. And at the same time, I also managed to reach player level 30 for another free trophy. After that, I then took down another rebel camp. I then got the trophy for riding all regular mounts. This includes riding a charger, a bristleback, and a claw strider. So these are the three mounts, uh, the three land mounts you can ride. I then managed to access another tall neck here. Then after that, I managed to get the trophy for killing at least one of every type of reconnaissance machine. I'll pop up here all the different types of reconnaissance machines there are. And then, as I mentioned earlier, this is where, in the main story, I was able to craft the vine cutter, which allows you to remove those metal flowers, unblocking those pathways, which is nice for when you explore. And so, continuing on with that main story, I did get this trophy here for encountering the Quen and recovering Dem Demeter. I then managed to complete the rain trace hunting grounds. And then after that, I also took on the third and final melee pit, here in Thornmarsh and beat the Pitmaster here, which then allowed me to unlock the last bit in this side quest line, which we'll get to soon and we get the trophy. Before that, I managed to make my way to the next gauntlet run and take this on and I managed to come back and win again this race, which of course unlocked me 
the trophy. I then made my way to San Francisco where I was able to get the tall neck at landfall here, so that's another tall neck down. After that I managed to get the trophy for fully upgrading a Val Surge to its maximum level. So in the skill tree here, I just fully upgraded a Val Surge. Another easy trophy. I have also been to San Francisco in real life as well, so it was pretty cool seeing some of the landmarks in this game. Moving on from that though, in this main story here, I thought I would just point this out, but here are some corruptors, and these are the only time they actually appear in the main story, and you do have to scan every type of uh, enemy, machine, uh, so make sure you don't miss them. However, they do appear in one of the final rounds in the arena as well, if you do happen to forget. And just after that, I also managed to get the next main story trophy, which was for surviving Thebes and befriending the Quen. After that, I then got the trophy for killing at least one of every type of transport machine. I'll pop them up now on the screen so you can see which ones there are. There's only five, so not too bad. And then just following that, I also got this trophy for learning all available skills on one skill tree. And this is pretty much it for trophies related to XP and the skill tree. So you just make sure you at least max out one of the skill trees. After making my way through most of the main story, getting towards the end now, you do unlock this really cool ability where you are able to override a Sunwing, which of course lets you mount it and fly. So yes, they added a flying mount in this game, making traversal so much easier. Obviously you can still use fast travel, but being able to fly to new areas that you haven't discovered yet makes it so much easier, especially when we come back for new game plus playthroughs. And so with that, I was able to get the final tall neck, unlocking the trophy for overriding all of them. So yes, the final tall neck you actually can't do until you unlock the Sunwing and the main story. So once you've done that, you can get all tall necks done. And so with that, I continued on with the main story and got the next one, which was for flying into battle and vanquishing Regala, another main story trophy. Alright, so now with that one done, that is actually the penultimate story trophy before the final mission trophy. So, that's right, step one is done and we are now going to move on to step two, which is to clean up all the other trophies to get ready for the final mission so we can get the platinum as soon as we finish the game. So, first up on the agenda of getting the cleanup trophies was for doing this side quest chain here, which you have to choose a new commander for the Desert Clan. It doesn't matter which one you choose, as long as you choose Yara or Draka, you will still get the trophy no matter what. And I'll pop up on the screen now uh, which side quest you have to do in order to get this trophy. And so as you can see for completing this final side quest in this chain, I did end up choosing Draka, but like I said, it doesn't really matter, and I was able to get this trophy here. Now we move on to doing another side quest here, which is for helping Katalo build and test a mechanized arm. So Katalo is one of your main allies you find from the main story, and if you talk to him at your base area, you'll unlock this uh, side quest line where you'll help him with this. However, before moving on to the next side quest trophy, I managed to get this one for killing at least one of every type of combat machine. I'll pop them all up on the screen now. Moving on from that to the next side quest, which was for helping Zoe reboot the land gods to save Plainsong. So Zoe is another one of your allies that you'll find at your main base of operations and you will unlock this side quest from speaking to her. I then made my way back to San Francisco in order to get another trophy for helping Olva retrieve data to help the Quen. So Olva is another one of your allies and that is another side quest trophy down. I then went around defeating the rest of the rebel camps as once you have completed them all, you do unlock a side quest which is required for a trophy. And as you can see, this came to fruition here, which I got the trophy for investigating all rebel camps and helped Eren defeat Aesira. So that is the final side quest ally trophy done. Next up on the agenda was finishing off the rest of the cauldrons. So there are actually six in this game. Two of them you do complete in the main story. So you just got to finish off the other four. And once you've done that, you will get a trophy for it, for overriding all of the cores. After that, the next thing I had to do was finishing off the last of the 
hunting ground, so there are only three in this game, so a lot less than Zero Dawn, and yeah, once you've, and all you have to do, like I said, is get the bare minimum, and you will get the trophy for completing all the trials at least once. And because I managed to get full marks on all the trials, I did get a legendary weapon, which then allowed me to equip uh, two coils on a weapon, which unlocks you a neat little trophy. After that, I then had to try and kill all of the acquisition machines, and I figured out the last one that I had to do was a grazer and a lance horn here. So after that, I managed to kill all acquisition machines and I'll put them all up on the screen now and after that the next trophy I went for was actually a miscellaneous trophy here which is for uh, gliding down on your shield wing for 60 seconds uninterrupted so you can't touch the floor or anything you have to have your shield wing out the whole time so what I did is I went on my flying mount flew all the way up to as high as I could go and then just glided all the way down and luckily I hit 60 seconds just before hitting the ground. You probably can find a tall mountain somewhere else to do this as well, uh, but I just use my flying mount. The next trophy I went for was for completing two flying side quests. So these side quests you can't actually do until you have unlocked a flying mount. So the first one I did was this errand called First to Fly. And then in order to get the trophy, I completed this quest here. Uh, there are other ones out in the map that you can find, but these are just the two that I found while exploring. So this one was the side quest, The Way Home. Alright, next up is the culmination of completing all of the melee pits, the three melee pits that I've mentioned throughout the video. Uh, this is the final side quest where you have to take on this warrior known as the Enduring and you have to defeat her in a melee pit and you will get a trophy. She is pretty difficult, took me a few attempts, um, but as you practice more and get good at the fight, eventually you will get it done just like I did and I managed to get the trophy for defeating the Enduring. The next trophy I then went for after that was for you had to upgrade every pouch at least once, which surprisingly I hadn't done, but I figured out that the only one that I hadn't upgraded yet was my potion pouch. And the cool thing about this game is you can create a job or side quest for uh, the materials that you need. and. Uh, it will take you to a place on the map where you can find those materials. And so using that feature, I was able to find a squirrel and shoot it. Sorry, little buddy. Uh, but I got its hide. And then so I was able to craft the potion pouch upgrade, which unlocked me the trophy for upgrading every pouch type at least once. So that includes foods, potions, traps, resources, and ammo pouches. After that, I then had to go for the trophy for overriding 10 different machine types. So this one's kind of difficult, but once you've done all of the cauldrons, you do unlock quite a few overrides. You might have to craft a few, as some of them you don't unlock straight away. You have to get the resources to craft them. And so I had to do that for a few, as I had like three or four more overrides to do. And so fitting, fittingly enough, the final one I went for was actually a Thunder Jaw, one of the toughest machines in the game. But I unlocked its override, went out and overrid one of them, which unlocked me the trophy. And so after that, the final trophy I had to go for before taking on the final mission was actually hitting level 50. I wanted to make sure that I already guaranteed myself hitting the maximum level and not having to rely on the XP I got from the final mission. And so I kind of just did some exploration and a bit of experimentation because I wasn't sure what the best way to uh, gather XP was. So at first I kind of went after collectibles, um, which was all right. And then I also decided to do some side quests. Like here, I actually managed to finish off the rest of the salvage contracts, which unlocks you a uh, pretty cool piece of armor, which is very good. The Osaram Artificer, I think. I might have pronounced that wrong. Anyway, I also managed to finish off the last of the gauntlet runs and get all of them completed as well. I then decided to take on the arena and finish off all different tiers of that, which 
was kind of stupid because I don't think it gave me any XP at all. However, it did give me good rewards where I was able to unlock, like I said earlier, some of the best weapons and armor in the game. So it was kind of worth it because it set me up for the New Game Plus playthrough and the DLC later on as well. But all in all, in the end, I managed to reach player level 50, surprisingly going after a Vista Point, which gave me just enough XP to reach player level 50. And from there, it was now time to take on the final mission. And I couldn't, once I started, I couldn't go back. And so during the final mission, I got the trophy for encountering and focus scanning every type of machine. So the final boss does count as one of these machines. And so without spoiling too much, after the credits, I did manage to get the final trophy for putting an end to the Zenith threat and discovering Nemesis. And so just as I planned it, with completing the final mission in the story, I do get the platinum for obtaining all Horizon Forbidden West trophies. Let's go. All right, so now with that done, we're not quite finished. We still got the DLC to do, of course. As you can see, I've unlocked New Game Plus. However, we are not going to be doing that quite yet as we're going to be doing Burning Shores first. So we're moving on to step three, complete Burning Shores. But I had to wait for it to download first. So in the meantime, I did some more exploring of the map in the main game. And I ended up searching up how to uh, get these collectibles. See, there were these three collectibles, which I never got any of them. So I was like, and they never appeared on the map. So I was wondering how I get them. So I searched up a guide and went to the places. And I ended up getting these totems here, which are a reference, of course, to the reboot of the God of War series, which I have made videos on. So go watch them. Um, but besides that little plug, um, we do end up getting our first one, which is actually a reference to Brock and Sindri, the two brothers from that game. I then found an axe in a tree, which then led me to a house, which looks very similar to the one from God of War, Kratos and Atreus's house. And in there, I did end up fighting the Kratos Totem, or the Totem of War. I then went to the place where you get the final totem, where I got stuck in a bus, and I couldn't get out. Uh, so this was a pretty funny glitch. But anyway, I restarted my save and went and picked up the Totem of Youth, which is of course a reference to Atreus. And once you found all three of those collectibles, you end up getting this really awesome face paint with the Mark of War, which is, of course, what Kratos has, his, the marks he has on his face. So even though this has got nothing to do with getting a trophy, I thought I'd just point out this cool little Easter egg in this game, and you can literally turn into Kratos. But anyway, with that done, my Burning Shores DLC had eventually downloaded by then, and I was ready to get into it. And so I went and spoke to Silence, and that puts us into a cutscene where we fly our Sunwing all the way to the Burning Shores, where we crash land, and we have a bit to investigate here. I won't give away too much of the story, but yes, we flew all the way from there to the Burning Shores. One of the first things I did as well was to check the skill trees, as there are three new skills in each skill tree due to the burning shores and there is a trophy related to unlocking all of these skills uh, that I will get later on. I also get a great look at this brand new uh, area of the world. Of course this is set in Los Angeles. Uh, it looks absolutely stunning and it, again I've been to Los Angeles in real life just like Las Vegas and San Fran so it was really cool to see the Hollywood sign off in the distance and other landmarks around the area. Also, the whole time I kept thinking of the Los Santos map from GTA 5, as there's quite a few landmarks that are the exact same in that game as well. One of the other first things I did was check out the new merchants as well, uh, as there is a trophy related to purchasing stuff from them using the new currency Brimshine, which is very similar to the Blue Gleam from the Frozen Wilds DLC from last game. In the DLC, you also get access to your own skiff that you can drive around, which is pretty cool. You can get across, because the map is mainly filled with water, so you can get across it quite quickly with this. And it reminds me of 
uh, Legend of Zelda Wind Waker and other games like that where you use a boat to get across water. Can you identify this landmark? Uh, this is meant to be LAX, the airport in LA. And here I was actually able to scan our brand new enemy type in the DLC, which is the, the water wing, very similar to a sun wing, but of course a water wing instead. And we do have to scan all, there's four new types of machines in this DLC that we do have to scan. I then completed my first side quest, the splinter within. You do have to complete all quests as well for a trophy in the DLC. I then also scanned another new enemy type, which are these little things here called Sting Spawns. Uh, they're pretty easy to kill, they go down in one hit, but in a big swarm of them they can be quite annoying. And the thing that actually creates these things is this ugly mug here, the Bile Gut, which is like this big massive frog. They're pretty hard to take down, and you do have to actually... Them and the Sting Spawn, you do have to kill a certain amount of times for a trophy later on as well. And shortly after that, I managed to loot my first Brimshine as well. And also unlock my first new skill, which is the Machine Grapple Strike, which you do actually need for a trophy as well. I then also found the brand new collectible in the DLC as well, which are these things called Aerial Captures. These are very similar to the uh, Vista points from the main game, but the goal of these is you have to use your flying mount to follow a trail until you get to the spot where you can see the image. You do have to find all of these for a trophy as well, and after that I also got my first Pangea figurine, which you do have to find all five of these for a trophy as well. We will get back to the collectibles later on, but for now I managed to equip my first elite coil or weave. So I got one of these from, I think, defeating an enemy, and then I just had to put it on one of my weapons or armor. From the main quest, you do manage to get this brand new weapon called the Spectre Gauntlet, which is a very futuristic weapon, very fun to use, and this is actually related to a trophy that we will get soon. And continuing on with the main story, I did end up getting my first trophy for locating the missing Quen and discovering Londra's plan to leave Earth. Here, I thought I should have unlocked the trophy for unlocking all the brand new skills in the Burning Shores, but it turns out you do have to also upgrade all of the Valor Surges to their max as well. That is, that's what counts as maxing out or getting all the skills. I then did some exploring and came across a Relic Ruin where I got the final ornament, but the most important thing about this is that it actually leads into a side quest with this fella here called Gildan, who is actually was in the Frozen Wilds DLC from the first game. Uh, he's a really cool character, but yeah, you just got to do this side quest with him, and that goes towards completing all the side quests in Burning Shores as well. I then purchased my first uh, piece of armor with the Brimshine, which was step one of getting this trophy. And step two was, of course, buying a uh, weapon with the Brimshine as well, and that is another free trophy. I then started on another side quest where you have a mini boss fight uh, with this guy here, Pyrrhic, and once you kill him, you end up getting a component for your Spectre Gauntlet, allowing you to upgrade it, and this is how you also get another trophy. As you can see here, for fully upgrading the Spectre Gauntlet. And also completing that quest is another step into getting that other trophy as well. Well, when I say it works towards that other trophy, it also actually unlocks this trophy here for helping the Quen of Fleet and recover priceless knowledge and help those who are captive. So yes, this actually this side quest actually gives you a trophy, but it is also a step into getting the next trophy as well. As part of the main quest as well in the Burning Shores, you end up getting the override for the Water Wing, which lets you fly it underwater, which is very, very cool, but also flies in the air as well. Moving on from that and continuing, continuing the main story, I also came across this place here, uh, the Dino Digit. Uh, so this is where you come after you've found all the Pangea figurines, so we will be back here soon. But for now, I do end up getting another story-related trophy, this time for uncovering the truth of Londra's plans for the Quen and rescuing Saker's sister. So that's another main story trophy. After that, I then decided to do some exploration and I came across the Cauldron Theta of this area in the Burning Shores. 
And whilst exploring the cauldron, I decided to tackle this trophy as well for killing five machines with the Spectre Gauntlet while gliding. This took a bit of trial and error, but I thought I'd do it on these Sting Spawns here as they are pretty quick to kill. So while you're gliding in uh, with your Shield Wing, you can use the Spectre Gauntlet. And with that trophy out of the way, I also went for this one for using a Grapple Strike on five unique machines. So this is the skill I was talking about earlier. Every time a machine gets knocked down, just make sure you're using this you pretty much grapple onto them and do the ability and you'll get it on five different machines. And to finish it off with the third trophy in a row, I of course did get a trophy for uh, accessing Cauldron Theta's core. I then went back to exploring uh, where I was able to rack up some XP and I managed to reach player level 60 here. That is the max level, so we're done with that thankfully. And just after that, I also managed to get the fifth and final uh, Pangea figurine as well. So those collectibles are done. However, in order to actually get the trophy for these things is you have to complete the Dino Digits quiz, which was what I was talking about earlier. So it was a bit of a, like a little puzzle. And once you've figured it out, you do end up getting the trophy. I then went for the next trophy, which is for finding all of the Delva trinkets, which I haven't mentioned yet. Uh, they are another collectible. However, the annoying things about these ones is they do not appear on the map. So I did end up just using a guide for these ones just to make it a bit quicker. I then uh, ended up finding a trinket and also an aerial capture here at this place, which is of course meant to be Santa Monica Pier, which was very cool to see. Once you've found all of the trinkets, you go to the Delvers camp, which surprisingly enough, that appears on the map. Uh, but once you go here, using the clues that you found from each uh, Delvers trinket, it leads you on a bit of a treasure hunt. And once you get to the end, you find that X marks the spot where you can recover the buried treasure and you end up getting the trophy for recovering all Delver trinkets and unearthing the trove. So that is another collectible down. I then started the next task for the next trophy, which was for completing these aerial captures. Here we get to see an aerial capture of the Griffith Observatory, another cool landmark in LA. And then once I had found all five uh, aerial captures, it unlocked the sixth one, which comes up as a quest line, which you go get, and that gives you the trophy for completing all of the aerial captures. I then went after this trophy here for killing 5 Bile Guts and 50 Sting Spawn. As I mentioned earlier, uh, you will fight, I think, 4 Bile Guts in the main story and obviously the Sting Spawn as well because they spawn them in. And then you just got to go kill out, uh, go out and kill one more uh, Bile Gut and you will end up getting that one done. Now, similar to the base game, I wanted to get the final uh, trophy for finishing off the DLC right as I finished the uh, last mission. And so one more trophy I had to get before starting the final mission in the DLC was for unlocking all of the new skill abilities in uh, Burning Shores. And since I'd already maxed out level 60, I wasn't going to get any skill points that way. So the only other thing to do was go back to the base game and do some more collectibles and some more side quests as you do get skill points from completing those. And so I ended up finishing off all the collectibles in the main game. And then I also completed a couple of side quests until I had just enough to get the final upgrade. And so with that done and all the skill points now, I ended up getting the trophy for learning all new skills in the Burning Shores. And so with that done, I went straight back into the main story, which I did end up uh, getting this trophy for focus scanning every new type of enemy. And similar to the main game, the final boss counts as a machine you have to scan. So once I did that, I got the trophy. And so with that, I finished the main story of the Burning Shores DLC, and I did end up getting this final trophy. But we still got to get this trophy, which all you have to do is go and talk to Silence back on the main map, and you get this trophy for completing all main and side quests in the Burning Shores DLC. So that is the Burning Shores DLC all done, 100% completed. Uh, but just really quick, uh, I also found uh, this spot here. It's a bit of an Easter egg, but it's also a memorial um, to Lance Reddick, who does uh, voice act Silence. Um, he did pass away earlier this year, and it's a nice little nod to him. Silence is one of the best characters in this series, so it is 
Uh, very sad, but it's nice to see this memorial here for him. So I had to make sure that I paid my respects. Um, but yeah, with uh, step uh, three, burning shores now complete, we can now move on to step four, which is of course getting all the trophies related to the new game plus. So once you go back to base and start up the new game plus, I made sure to click on ultra hard um, as we need to play through the game on that difficulty and get it done to get a trophy along with new game plus playthrough to get a trophy. A cool thing is you can skip the tutorial and get straight into the main map as well. Another thing to keep note of now is when you complete the main quest, you also get champions tokens, which is the currency in the new game plus, and this is required uh, for the last trophy that we will be going for, but I'll get to that once we get to that step. Uh, for now, all I did was make sure I got all of the tall necks in each region, and then just pretty much speed ran through the main quest as quick as I could. Also, another thing, you keep your overrides, so I made sure to override a Sunwing as quickly as I could so I could get around as quick as possible to get this done as well. Along the way, I also purchased my first face paint with the Champions tokens. Later on, I then also managed to buy the rest of the face paints with the Champions tokens. So that's five of those down. In terms of the difficulty, I didn't find it too bad except for a few select fights like this one in the main story with the Thunderjaw. Um, some of them, yeah, were pretty hard, but I think with the uh, weapons that I got from the Burning Shores DLC and reaching max level, obviously going for the Platinum as well, uh, it did make it a lot easier, this new game plus playthrough on the hardest difficulty because you already had such overpowered weapons and the other thing was the final boss was pretty difficult as well. With that being said, I did manage to get it done and I got the trophy for completing a playthrough on ultra, ultra hard difficulty. And then of course, at the same time, I did get the trophy for completing a new game plus playthrough. However, now it is time for the unofficial step five of this run. Unfortunately, unlike in Zero Dawn, where we'd be done by now, for some reason they decided to add in uh, special new like face paint and dyes and uh, weapons that you get through New Game Plus, the champions tokens that I mentioned earlier, and you do have to buy every single one of these new items, and that is in total about 120 champions tokens, and you only get about two champions tokens per quest as well. So after completing the main story, you definitely wouldn't have enough to get everything. So that means you do need to go back and do some side quests. Also, another option that I did was continue on with the Burning Shores DLC main quest, where you actually get three champions tokens. And in the final Burning Shores uh, quest, you also get four. Also, if you're watching in the background, I have no idea how this happened, but it was a pretty funny glitch. This slaughter spine just went flying in the air for some reason. Anyway, back on track, using the champions tokens that I gained from the Burning Shores DLC, I bought the rest of the dyes for the armor, and so I had both face paints and dyes done at this point. And so with the five face paints and four dyes bought, I still had eight weapons to purchase, each costing 10 champions tokens each. And that means I'd be having to do a lot of the side quests on the ultra hard difficulty in order to do this. So instead, just to make it a bit of a quicker process, I ended up creating a new, another new game plus from my ultra hard difficulty playthrough and I put it on the easiest difficulty story so I could breeze through everything, get the champions tokens quickly as possible and finish off these weapons. And so what I ended up doing was pretty much just exploring every place I went. I did a few of the main quest stories but I also did lots of the side quests as well just cause they were nearby and easy to do. And so that's pretty much how I grinded all the way to 80 champions tokens. I was buying the weapons along the way but yeah, I ended up needing 80 in total to get the final uh, rest of the weapons. Honestly, you probably could have done it uh, more efficiently than what I did, but if you are going to do it, I would recommend that you do the Rebel Camps and Cauldrons as well as they give you plus three tokens instead of just two like the other quests. But in the end, I did end up getting it finished after a bit of a grind and I got the trophy for obtaining all new game plus rewards. And with that, the 100% for the Forbidden West is official. Every single trophy finally completed. 
Let's go. All right, so time for my final thoughts and recommendations. All right, so just in terms of giving Forbidden West a go, I would probably, I gave Zero Dawn an eight and a half. I'd probably have to give this game probably a nine and a half. They literally improved everything from the first game. Literally everything is better in every single way. Uh, the only reason you might not play it is maybe if you haven't played the first one, or like I said in the other video, if you're not into open world games, I can definitely understand. But yeah, definitely you should play this game. It is amazing. Now, in terms of the Platinum, I gave Zero Dawn an 8. I think I'll give this game a 9, similar to how I gave playing it one point higher. Uh, you, if you play this game, you should go for the Platinum. It's easier than the Platinum in Zero Dawn because you don't actually have to find all of the collectibles this time. And you don't have to do like all the quests and whatnot as well. So it definitely is a lot easier to get the Platinum this time around. Honestly, you know what though? I know this is going to sound kind of weird, but I think I might actually change my rating to a 10. I literally don't see any reason why you shouldn't go for the Platinum in this game. I know it's a higher rating than just playing it, but if you are going to play it, you may as well Platinum it, because there's, there's literally no trophies that are hard to do. All of them are easily manageable, so honestly, you should just go for the Platinum. However, this is where the rating is probably going to go down, going for the actual 100%. I gave Zero Dawn a 7.5 for its 100%. For this game, I'm probably going to have to give a 6.5. The Burning Shores DLC is good, don't get me wrong. The setting is amazing, LA. The actual map is probably better than the Frozen Wilds DLC. But the Frozen Wilds DLC in the first game definitely offered way more side content to do other than just the main story. So in that aspect, Burning Shores was a bit disappointing. And I don't think the main storyline is as compelling as the one in the Frozen Wilds either. Also, New Game Plus, literally so much harder just because of that one trophy where you have to buy all of the new award rewards. It tacks on like another 10 hours of pure grind just to get the champion's tokens and you're pretty much just doing the same thing again as what you did in your original playthrough. So rather than just being able to speed run straight through the main story on the hardest difficulty, no, you also have to go back and grind some more just for those tokens. So I'm glad I got the 100% done. I still had fun with it, I guess, because I do really like this game and the combat and stuff does make it replayable. Even so, even though you are doing lots of the same thing, it still keeps you engaged. So if you really are into the game, I would recommend you do the 100%. But if you just want to go for the Platinum, I would totally understand because... Yeah, the 100% can be a bit finicky. I mean, maybe still give Burning Shores a go, but the New Game Plus playthrough just adds on just more playtime that you honestly don't need to do if you're not looking to get the 100%. Anyway, uh, that brings me to the end of my video uh, for Forbidden West. So the Platinum and 100% all done and dusted, and I'm glad it's over. Took me a while to get this video out, sorry for the wait. Thank you so much if you stuck around to the end now. I really do appreciate it. And yeah, if you haven't already also, it would be awesome if you subscribe to the channel and also like this video as well. It really helps me out. And you can see when the next video is coming out, so stay tuned for that one. So for the next game I'm doing, I'm going to try and make it a bit cryptic, but I'm going to continue with my theme of doing PlayStation exclusives. Um, I don't really want to do another game that takes like 90 hours like Forbidden West so I'm gonna try do a game that's a bit shorter just to have a bit of a break but it was a PS4 exclusive and I'll leave it at that uh, leave a comment down below having a guess at it and yeah stay tuned and I'll let you know when that next video is coming out catch you guys in the next one